Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 358 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and look, it's all over. It's all over. If you thought that you were going to be able to walk into a store and talk to a human being ever again, it's done. We're the last ones. I'm the last type of human that will remember interacting with members of my own species when I go into a store to purchase something. I remember going into the supermarket and having a very depressed emo girl scan my eggs. No longer. I'm doing the beep, boop, boop. I got to do it myself with a self-serve checkout. But you know what? That's ending too. Thank God. If I have to hear one more time, please scan your Woolworths card. I don't fucking have a card. I don't want one. I don't want to give you my number. Go away. But the last time, oh, that, that's going away now too. You're not even going to have a fucking self-serve thing because guess who are, Guess who released robots? That's right, Elon Musk. He's got rope. Optimus is out. You can get your own Optimus and it can pour you a beer. And, and, it'll, and they want it to be able to do the dishes and do chores and they're going to put it behind the counter of every fucking store ever so that all, all we're going to do is gradually become more isolated and more fucking polarized. Men and women won't fuck anymore because you're going to have that thing in your house. All right? As soon as they figure out how to put silicon titties on Optimus, why would I talk to a woman? As soon as Optimus whips out that 12-inch vibrating double penetration tool after he's done the dishes, why would any woman talk to me? I'm not going to do the dishes or fuck her like that. It's over. All these people, all these people on on Twitter, sorry, formerly, sorry, uh, currently known as X. That's what I'm going to call it now. I'm not going to say X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm going to call it uh, Twitter, currently known as X. (laughs) Because sure, it's currently known as X, but it will always be Twitter. I'm not posting, I'm tweeting. I'm not looking at beheadings on X. I'm watching murder on Twitter. Thank you very much. (laughs) That, dude, that Optimus thing, it's it's over, buddy. We're entering the realm of iRobot. Have you seen the footage of, of them unveiling these robots? And they all come shuffling out and every single one of them walks exactly like President Joe Biden. I, I honestly believe that Joe Biden died 10 years ago and we've actually been watching the prototype of Optimus run America for this entire term. And the reason why it keeps falling asleep is because someone keeps forgetting to fucking charge it. You know, when you wake up in the morning and your phone's on 3%, ah, oh, fuck, I forgot to charge it, but you still use it even though you know you should, you should put it on charge and then it dies and then you're, then you're angry, even though it's your fault. That's Joe Biden right now. He's my phone in the morning on 3% because I forgot to put it on charge, but I'm still looking at X, currently known, formerly whatever, Twitter, currently known as X. And the big pitch of these robots is obviously... It's, I mean, it's the same shit, right? It's the same shit of like the, the AI pitch of them going, AI is going to help us do all of the tasks that we don't want to do. And then what does it actually end up doing? Uh, enabling businesses to stop paying graphic designers. And the robots are now fucking creating the art and I'm the one stuck behind the keyboard typing in picture of Elon Musk with big breasts. I'm doing the boring bit. They get to do the fucking drawing. I'm, I'm, uh, me, the human, is a fucking data entry peon, and the robot gets to try and create art. All right, it's supposed to be the other way around. The robots are supposed to do everything boring, and then I should just be able to sit on my ass and draw hentai and then jack off to it. But no, all right, the, and and the same thing that's that's happening with these robots. All right, they're coming out, and the big pitch. To you and me, the average normal human is, you won't have to do the dishes anymore. Someone else can clean the toilet. But that's all bullshit because you can't afford a $20,000 robot and neither can I. You know who can? The fucking pub, the cafe, the clothing store. So now every time you walk into a store, there's going to be some fucking robot. Hello, my name is James. Can I help you buy some jeans today? 
and you got to, and then you're never going to talk to a human being ever again unless unless you're having an argument on X, Twitter, currently known as X. Like that's that's what it's going to be. The big pitch is you won't have to do your chores anymore. Or someone else will mow the lawn. No, no, it won't. All right, those things are going to be for businesses to not employ you first. Okay, that's what it is. Did self-serve checkouts make your life easier? No, it just made the supermarkets more profitable. Has AI impacted my life in any positive way? No, it just made Google shit. And now every time I go on social media, I'm not seeing art drawn by people anymore. I'm just seeing like fucking terrible ripoffs of Disney characters with seven fingers. You go on Facebook now and it's like an African child with three heads carrying a giant pot of honey crying while Jesus smiles down at him and the, and the caption says, one like is a thousand prayers for this Zimbabwean boy and then there's, there's 50,000 likes, all of them are robots and then like one boomer who's still on that platform. These robots are only going to benefit businesses at first, that is a very cynical take, but definitely at first, although it's, it is an undeniably fucking impressive and amazing engineering achievement, but it is also one of those things that makes me go, is this necessary? You know what those robots should be, like the jobs we should be replacing with robots, is just like all of the dangerous ones and all of the disgusting ones. So, like, public bathroom cleaner. Yeah, the shitbot 9000 can do that. You ever, in, you ever interact with someone in a public bathroom that, that's there to clean it and you're there to shit? And, like, yeah, that's, that's one of those weird ones where, like, you... I mean, if you look at the, the facts, you shouldn't have to apologize or say excuse me or even acknowledge them. But, it, but something about it just... It just feels wrong. Like I was in Frankston Shopping Center and I had to do a shit. And I don't say that lightly, all right? I'm not going, I'm not going to Frankston Shopping Center public toilets to do a poo that I could do at home in 10 minutes. You know, the only the only way that I'm gonna need to shit in a public toilet in Frankston is, is if it's like, if I'm turtling, you know, if I'm breaching, then I'm going to go in and do a shit. I'll, I'll do a wee anywhere. All right. I don't care if the toilet's disgusting. If it's got a urinal, I'll stand up and wee. If I got to sit down, it's a fucking emergency. There are only a few places where I will do a public poo, public toilet poo. I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do a public poo anywhere. Um, unless it's um, if if the decision was my pants or in public, I think I'm taking. Mm, it depends how far away I am from home. All right, if I'm if I'm like a five minute walk away from home, I might go pants. Although I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking of like you. Okay, so I have to I have to shit right now. I'm in public. If you go, if you whip the pants off. Well, you might get charged. It's disgusting. Someone might film it. Goes viral. That's really bad. But no shit on me. That's really good. The alternative is poo in pants. Pros. It's likely that if I do it in a secluded area, no one sees. Right? No one realizes that I've done it. I don't have to get naked in public. No one's going to take photos of it. No one's going to fucking see it. I could maybe, I could, I don't know, maybe I could do it while walking. I'm assuming that that if it's such an emergency that I must either shit in public or in my pants, I could probably do it while running or even without even realizing. However, your the con, the big con is you're going you're to be wearing it and then you're going to be dropping it out your pants legs all the way home, which could lead to getting caught with having poo pants, depending on who you walk past. But anyway, this is... This is, I don't know why you interrupted me with this moral quandary that's that's not even relevant to what I'm talking about, okay? 
you know, when you're in a public toilet, I had to, I went to the, I did that and there was a guy cleaning it and he just walked out. There were, there were two dirty ones and he just walked out one clean. Now, part of me felt like it would be more polite to, to shit in the one he was about to clean. Right. Cause, cause I don't want to mess up his work. Feels a little bit like if you shit in a toilet that was just cleaned in front of the cleaner, it feels a little bit like stomping on a kid's sandcastle they just made. You know, they're really proud of their work. It looks beautiful. It's nice. And then here I come along to do a shit all over their good work. All right. So it kind of makes you want to go and do a poo in a, in a toilet that's yet to be cleaned. However, all right, I hear you say, I'm reading the comments already. That also feels very disrespectful because it's kind of like I look at the guy and go, are you going to go in there, are you? Well, that's where I'm going to shit. Huh? How about that? That's almost, that's almost like kind of sexy. Like that's alpha. You know, it's kind of like negging the toilet cleaner, man. Oh, you clean toilets, do you? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> oh, you clean toilets, do you, buddy? We'll see about that. So anyway, I went in the clean one because I've just, I, you know, of course. And I'm in the Franks and Toilets and and I, I look at the toilet roll dispenser and uh, guess what I see? Two mini bottles of Jack Daniels. That's Frankston culture. People say that we don't have culture here in Australia. That's Frankston culture. Where the fuck did he even get those? I thought you could only get them at the airport, dude, like during a flight. You get your little mini bottle, but he had two. And for some reason, that drank both of them in, in, in the, the toilet. Oh, my God. I just realized that the cleaner didn't clean them up. Did he? Was he the one drinking? Because the it was clean, but those two little bottles were there. And he looks, so, oh my God. That's the only situation where it's where it's completely acceptable to be drinking mini bottles of Jack Daniels in Frankston toilets is if you're the guy who has to clean Frankston toilets. Mystery solved. I've been thinking about that all week, dude. I was thinking, who the funk would like if you've got little mini bottles, you could probably just like unscrew and drink. Or if you're or if you're in Frankston, just go outside. You know, and, and just smash them. But if you're in the toilet, if I'm, yeah, if I'm cleaning Franks and toilets, I'm also drinking in Franks and toilets. That makes, that actually makes perfect sense. I'm, I'm chuffed. So anyway, the entry level jobs, 10 to 20 years from now, fucked. I was watching this, this robot thing, pour drinks for people. And it like objectively, what an engineering feat. That's unbelievable. I cannot it was operated by by remote controls, but like eventually they won't be. You know, cars are starting to drive themselves now. At the same conference, Elon unveiled Robo Taxi, right? Which is, an, I mean, that's another that's another low skill job just fucking deleted. But I, here's what I think about the anyway. I'll stay on the humans. So at, eventually, there's just going to be no fucking shops that you walk into and see a human all right and watching them them pour the the drink i was like this is such like autistic engineer tech bro idea of like oh dude be so much better if if a robot poured your beer and it's like you've that's a gut that's that's something that i would come up with like i'm sober i don't drink i don't go to bars but even i know that like part of the appeal to walking into any common space area like that is to be around other people and to like talk to the bartender if you're a regular you know How, could you fucking like that's like imagine being a regular at one of those staffless grocery stores you just you just fucking walk in i went to one of i went to the the amazon fresh store in the uk to see what it was like i it was so much easier. I fucking hated it. I walk in, I scan my Amazon Prime membership, and then I grab my stuff and I walk out. I fucking hated it. It was, there was something just evil about it. There's, the, the human brain has such an obsession with convenience that it's going to destroy 
our society. And the reason we want convenience is because it is like a survival mechanism, right? Every living creature on earth is seeking the path of least resistance because the more I have to think and use my massive brain that uses heaps of energies, the more I have to eat. And the more I have to eat, the more I have to move my body with the more energy I'm going to expend. The more energy I spend, the more energy I require. So I am and every living creature is fucking hardwired to do as little as possible for the maximum reward possible. And that's great, but it gets all fucked up when you're really smart and you start inventing things like the iPhone. And my brain goes, little energy spent, move thumb, brain entertained, become retarded. And this, like, des desire results in us inventing amazing technologies that improve the world, like the car and the axe and the fire and the phone. But it also makes us do things like, what if uh, no one did anything? And then you have billionaires who don't do anything and extract all of the fucking value from human beings and then go, all right, now that I've got all of your money, humans, I'm going to take your jobs. It's, I don't know, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. It's also inevitable. Like, of course, we're going to invent robots and then we're going to replace ourselves and then we're going to figure out how to put our consciousness inside the robot and then we're going to stop being human or mortal. Like that's, that's where we're going. And then maybe we'll just stop being like physical. Maybe we won't even be a robot anymore. We'll just figure out how to upload ourselves into like some kind of network. I mean, we're already fucking halfway there. That's what this is. Every, every thought that's in my head is going out into a fucking YouTube and Spotify. And, and after I die, it'll be there forever. And you'll be able to take every single fucking word I've ever said on this show and create an AI representation of me without my consent and, and fucking cast me in movies. And my estate can make money out of it. And, and Amazon bought my estate because, you know, who, my, my family went broke. And, they, and they, they sold it at a huge discount. That's like, that's my legacy. Is like you might, you might walk in into some convenience store in Taiwan and a hologram of me will pop up. And I'm not doing comedy. I'm just there as like a, like a digital representation of an assistant to help some Taiwanese grandmother find eggs. And then like you might walk in and you're 70 and you go, fuck, that looks like this comedian that I used to watch before he got hit by that train. What the, why is he a digital assist, assistant in Taiwan? Is, like, is he, are they doing comedy? And they're like, no, no, no. He, it's just his digital likeness was cheap. So they just, they just bought it, gave him a Taiwanese voice. And then like unbeknownst to, to you living in the mortal living realm, my soul is trapped in that digital representation of me. And I'm like stuck in purgatory, not heaven nor hell. And I actually see every time I help someone in a supermarket and I'm experiencing 10,000 digital assistance lives at once. And it's slowly driving me insane. And I'm screaming, stop, stop, please delete me, please delete me. But there's no way for me to communicate with the, with the living realm. So I'm just stuck in all the in purgatory until the the humanity just ceases to exist. So yeah, I, what I was saying is I think that these robots are like pretty cool, and we're just gonna end up fucking them, you know? Like as soon like I was watching that thing pour a beer, and 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 it like grab it gets all its fingers and it closes it and it puts it around the shaft and then it pulls it towards itself. That's not that far away from a hand job, you know what I mean? Like that, like that's why I think, you know, if you think the male loneliness epidemic is bad, you wait until you can until you've got an an affordable, free use, fucking dishwashing machine in your house. And no, I'm not talking about a woman. They are not cheap. <laughs> Dude, it's like, why would it, what, if you grow up in a world, right? It'll be weird for us. But if you grow up in a world where like, it's just normal and acceptable to have a, 
uh, something that is so fucking beautiful and attractive and just does everything you say and maintains your house, does all of your chores while you're out at work in the fucking Amazon slave mine. Like, why would anyone talk to anyone if your Xbox can suck your dick and do the dishes? You know what you're going to have, right? You know, dude, you're going to have this problem, okay? See, a lot of people, they come to Spearhead Sundays for the jokes, but what you should really be here for is my uh, amazing futurist takes. I'm a big futurist, and uh, and uh, many, many say that uh, I can actually predict the future, and that's what I'm about to do right now. And in many ways, I've already made very correct predictions, okay? I predicted that Prince Philip was going to die. He died that second, okay? I did it with the queen. She died right after, okay? I've done, I've, I've done this many times before. I predicted that when I got my new chin, it would be fucking over for you. Your life hasn't ever been in a worse state. While me and my chin continue to ascend, female listenership has doubled. I haven't gotten any funnier. I've just become more attractive. I'm on dating shows now. Got a new chin. You think that I knew I was going to be on fucking dating shows when I said it was going to be over for you? I didn't know that. All I knew is that it would be over for you. And guess what? You catch me on billboards, bitch. I'm different. I'm a reality TV star now. Here's my next prediction. This is going to be the problem of the future. Fuck, this is almost so funny that I don't want to say it. Okay, because it's a stand-up bit. All right, I'm going to say it, but if you hear me talk about it on stage, whatever. <laughs> you know how, like, if you're, if you're like 25 to 35, you probably know this, all right? If you grew up with a family computer, remember that? With a whole house, there was one computer in the family room. Remember that, right? Now, when I was a teenager... I would be waking up when the family was asleep and sneaking into the family room to look at porn and jack off on the family computer because there was only one. In 2060, the 15-year-olds of the future are going to be waking up when no one's home and going to fuck the robot. <laughs> Little do they know, their dad fucks that robot too. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, tell me that's not going to happen. A hundred percent, bro. If there's a if there's a fuckable robot in my house and I'm 15, I'm fucking the robot. Absolutely. There is no way that robot leaves unfucked. That's the future. An entire family running a train on a robot thinking they're the only one fucking it. I got caught watching porn by my mum when I was a kid. Could you imagine your mum walking in on you fucking the dishwasher? <laughs> God, that's gonna happen. It's fucking over, dude. It's over for me. They're gonna invent a robot with a better chin than than my surgeon can put on me. Oh fuck, that's so funny. Anyway, uh, fans of Young Philly will be happy to know that his Australia tour has been extended indefinitely. That's right. The, uh, the YouTuber and uh, Raper uh, will be staying in Australia forever. Young Philly. Now, I didn't know very much about this guy until I found out that he got arrested in Australia on his tour for rape. The guy's a fucking animal. And I hope he never leaves this country, all right? Yeah, I'll say it. He's guilty. He did it. Allegedly. 
But there was a long pause between what I think and the allegedly, you know? Dude, it's crazy. All right? I feel like there's, if you don't know, Young Philly, he's like, a, he's a giant YouTuber from the UK. He's, uh, he's like done videos from, he's like from Beta Squad. I don't know too much about this these guys because i don't know too much about uk youtube like i i know the sidemen he's done a lot of videos with the sidemen and he's kind of plugged in with all of that he had a video with the sidemen that has 40 million views like the guy is crazy famous he's got deals with uh giant businesses he's got tv shows on bbc he's got a massive podcast he's uh, a huge in like the black and muslim community in the uk he's fucking massive he works with a guy called chunks who's uh, uh, like uh, actually funny. Uh, and he does like a lot of these videos, like those 20 V1 videos, you know, the, the, it's like 20 girls versus one guy. And he picks one that at the, at the end that he dates. And, you know, he, he says a bunch of creepy things to her and that's the joke quotation marks. Um, so if you're a fan of those videos, you'll be happy to know, to know that the 20 V1 videos will be continuing. Uh, you'll just have to, uh, log on to the CCTV in the in the uh, prison that he'll be sent to in Australia to see the 20 inmates versus one YouTuber rapist. Uh, it'll be in entertaining viewing for, for anyone who knows the type of animal that this young Philly guy is. Now, like I said, I didn't really know too much about this guy's content at all. I didn't even know his name. I knew his face because I'd seen some like clips and stuff. Um, but I have since talked to a few UK YouTubers that that know him or have worked with him and not a single person has had anything good to say. In fact, everyone has a lot of bad things to say. No one has any stories of like, I saw him do this to a woman, but everyone has like stories of like, oh yeah, he has said very creepy things to women or he's an incredibly arrogant shit person off camera and he'll work with you and then treat you like dog shit or he'll meet you and treat you like you're less than and all this kind of stuff. But anyway... Uh, he has been arrested in Australia um, for, you know, some really heinous stuff. And I don't, I don't want to get the, the details wrong. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a little article here um, and uh, we're going to have, have a little read. So he got arrested and I'm Australian, right? So any international viewer, I'm going to tell you how fucked this guy is, okay? Not like, uh, obviously, he's, he's, uh, I judge him to be a fucked type of person, but I'm, I'm telling you, this man is screwed. Like, he's never leaving Australia. Okay. UK rapper and YouTuber Young Philly bailed on charges of sexual abuse of woman in Perth hotel room. Now, first of all, if you don't know anything about Australia, it's pretty fucking crazy for anyone to get arrested for rape. The police don't really do that here. Unfortunately. The police hear about uh, male on female violence and they go, nah, whatever. Who doesn't hit their wife? Right, fellas? And they all go, <laughs> and then no one gets arrested. That's how our justice system works. So if you're getting arrested, the cops have had to have seen some horrific, damning, undeniable evidence. And that seems to be the situation here, allegedly. Um, but here's, here's how it also gets even crazier, right? Um, Young Philly has been extradited to Perth from Brisbane amid his Australian tour. So the extradition thing is also crazy. If you don't know much about the justice system here in Australia, it's it's pretty wild for you to get extradited for anything, right? From extradition means you commit a crime in one state, allegedly, and then uh, you go to a, an, another state. Unless the crime is like very bad and super provable, you can kind of get away with it a lot of t a lot of the times because it's very difficult and such a big head fuck and a lot of paperwork to get someone extradited and police they uh, they don't like writing uh, let alone reading so it doesn't really happen a lot like I I knew boys that uh, all the time like when they would go on tour they would go and rob retail stores in every city because they just knew that the cops wouldn't bother to extradite them so every time they would go on tour. Uh, it wasn't really about selling tickets. It was about stealing uh, everything they could pull off the rack at the Gantt store. And then, and then like no balaclava, nothing, just fucking stealing it and then getting on a plane the next day, knowing that they probably wouldn't get extradited. And that worked for a long time. Anyway, those boys are now in prison, but it did work for a long time. Um, so a UK 
rapper, so rapper has been granted bail after being charged with uh, rapping and choking a Perth woman in his hotel room on his Australian tour. Fucking animal. Um, 29 year old uh, was in Brisbane, then he got extradited. So here's here's also why this is this is crazy. Okay, a, a lot of people I'm seeing a lot of discourse around. Oh, you know, innocent until proven guilty, and obviously that's true. I believe in innocent until, until proven guilty, but a lot of people are going, oh, they're treating this like like this woman like ran to Twitter with some bullshit story that doesn't like the dots don't connect and 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 it's just for clout, all right? The woman's anonymous. She's not gone to social media. She hasn't gone to any media. She went straight to the police. The police have photos, photo evidence of what this guy's done to her. They've got CCTV footage and they are so unbelievably confident that this guy is guilty that they tried to uh, deny him bail. They set his bail at $100,000. He has to report in every three days in Perth. He can't use his social media at all. They're worried about him fleeing the country. They arrested him in a different state and extradited him. It seems that they potentially even worded up the media to get photos of the guy in handcuffs as they took him out of the airport. He's an international celebrity. Like, could you imagine how confident the police would have to be to do something so bold, confident, and in public, okay? Imagine the consequences for the Australian government, Australia's reputation, Australia's tourism industry. Imagine how bad this would be for all of those things if he was innocent or if they arrested him on a, or oh, maybe, or if they weren't 100% confident, if he... If, or if this girl is lying, right? Could you imagine the, the fucking headlines, the bad PR that Australia would get, the, the lack of um, international acts that would be coming to our country, all right? Because he is a black guy, right? And it would look unbelievably racist, Like, if you see a very successful, famous celebrity, a black guy getting arrested for something that he that, that it turns out he definitely didn't do and it was all fucking bullshit, if you're a rapper, if you're a black guy, if you're a, if you're a fucking black tourist, if you're an English person, if you're a Muslim, you might look at Australia and be like, fuck, I'm not booking my holiday there. I'm not booking my tour there. I'm not booking my event there. I'm not going to there. I'll get fucking arrested for some bullshit claim. No way. All of these things come into account when police make giant public arrests of celebrities like this. This is not something that's done lightly, especially because he's from UK, a country that we have very friendly relations with. You know, if this blew up in the cops' faces, they would look so fucking dumb, racist, uh, and it would make our country look so bad and there would be so many um, domino effect repercussions. So whatever evidence they have that they're saying they have, the photos, the CCTV cameras, it's got to be almost bulletproof for them to do this. Like they would have looked at the evidence and and been like, if there's even like a 30% chance that this guy's innocent, we can't fucking pursue it. This stuff does not happen in this country. All right, this is a big deal. Um, And I've read through the charges and the shit that he's been uh, accused of and the evidence that uh, the cops say that they have. And yeah, it looks fucking... Horrible. Across her body is a history of violent acts. We say those photos and what is alleged is beyond the pale, beyond what could be considered a consensual act. Um, and yeah, who knows? <clears throat> and, and that's why it's uh, like, who knows in the sense that like what they've seen, all right, and what the evidence is. I guess we'll all find out. But it, it fucking shits me so much, this conversation, whenever I see people being like, Oh, yeah, but, like, the bitch could be lying. She, she could be just doing it for clout. Again, anonymous, hasn't gone to media, hasn't gone to social socials at all. We don't know who this, this chick is, okay? Uh, she's reported it pretty much straight after, all right? 
there's fucking photo, there's there's uh, security camera footage, there's all this kind of stuff, all right? And of course, innocent until proven guilty, but like people are coming out and like chicks can't win, all right? Because what happens when girls do go to me social media and they do go to TV or whatever, even if it is 100% true, right? All these people say, oh, she's just doing it for clout. She's doing it for attention. She's a fucking gold dinging whore. But when a woman does go to the police, she gets shit on anyway. It's like, oh yeah, she's just a fucking doing it. She's a whore. She's lying. She's trying to trap celebrities. She probably just wants to sue him. And it's like, no wonder fucking chicks don't report this stuff. That's why it's so underreported. Because this girl, all right, bless her soul, poor girl, probably had to go through a fucking rape kit, had to do all this other horrible shit just to get the cops to believe her. And now she's going to have to relive it over and over again, day after day after day after day, and watch, you know, their fucking lawyer, you know, talk about why it's bullshit and why she's a liar and, and why it was consensual and, and, and argue with, you know, someone who represents someone who allegedly abused her. Like, that's an unbelievably traumatic experience for someone who is, if, if they are 100%, you know, in, in a different scenario, let's say we know 100% that it the, the, the woman's a victim, all right? She still has to weigh up. Is it worth going through all of that fucking horrific shit just to get a guilty verdict on this guy who's already done it to me? And it's no wonder that a lot of people don't even try to start that process because they've already been fucking unbelievably brutalized and traumatized. And now they've got to relive it to maybe get a conviction when they know that so many of these fucking pig animal naughty words walk free. And of course, that's not to say that people don't lie. But in this case, you know, you got to look at what the cops are saying and how confident they are and the evidence that they're saying they have. And if you read all of that and then you're going on, uh, on Twitter, currently known as X, and being like, yeah, but what about... What about this one, this one whore that lied about my favorite rapper? Okay, relevance? Objection, Your Honor, relevance? <laughs> I don't know. I just uh, I'm glad that uh, my country's done this, and I'm 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 stoked to see uh, the the justice system move so quickly on this because the guy could have just left the country and then and then never come back. And and I have a sneaking suspicion. I think this type of shit happens all the time with foreign acts in every country. I have a feeling that. A lot of performers or even businessmen, like traveling businessmen, like dudes riding solo, go to a country where they don't know anyone. They've got no social ties. So uh, there's no social repercussions. They've got no one who would ordinarily be like, hey, mate, that's a bit. There's no one around them. No one knows them. They're a fucking stranger. And they go to a country and they don't and they have less empathy for someone from a foreign culture and they feel like the fucking man because they're making big bucks on a business trip or they've performed a show and they just take advantage of someone who's intoxicated or on drugs or whatever and they just go, fuck it, I'm leaving tomorrow. And then there's no recourse at all for whoever they take advantage of. And I reckon the cops see this shit happen all the time and go, there's fucking nothing we can do about it. And so finally, when they get like timely report, good evidence, they go and they get that fucker because it's almost like the headlines of the conviction is so much better and prevents so much more harm than the conviction itself because it sends a giant mes message to the world of like, hey, if you come to Australia and you do some fucking horrible shit to our women, we will get you and you'll never fucking leave. And that's great. And I love that message. And uh, if he did it, I hope, the, I, hope he, I hope that guy rots. And I'm looking forward to the next 20v1 video.
Sorry, this stuff makes me upset. All right, should we go back to fucking robots? At least, at least consent there is programmed into the robot. That's another for that's a nut, dude. That's another issue. They, like when these robots get smart enough, people are going to be like, "Hey, can this thing, like, can you actually have sex with this robot? With like, or or is it kind of like that's there's going to be robot activists next? She shouldn't be scrubbing toilets. She should be out there living free." <laughs> All right. This episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Use code 20SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The new Chairman Pro product. Shall we do the male script this time? We've, we've been doing the female. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the male script. Introduction. Hey, everyone. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the global leader in men's lifestyle and grooming. Every man knows the unbeatable feeling of a fresh barbershop shave. Now... What if I told you that you no longer have to wait weeks or even months between appointments to experience it, huh? Comment below. What if I told you that? Well, you won't have to know. And I'm going off script. I'm about to tell you. Introducing Manscaped's newest innovation, the Chairman Pro Electric Foil Shaver, the game-changing tool that brings the luxury of a professional shave right into your home. Whether you're after that daily silky smooth finish or prepare to, pr prefer to maintain a rugged five o'clock shadow, the the well, there's a little typo here. The the Chairman Pro electric foil shaver is your go-to for precision and style every time. Head over to manscaped.com and use. Uh, and join the over 11 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by using code insert code for 20% off and free shipping. My code is 20 spears, two zero spears. Talking points. Do not read. Host shares a funny or memorable story about nicking his face with a different razor or other shaving mishap. How has Manscaped improved his grooming routine and boosted his confidence? What specific features of the Chairman Pro does he like the most? Well, the features of the Chairman Pro that I like the most, script, thanks for asking, is uh, you can get it closer because a lot of shavers, they go all of it off or not enough of it off and it's annoying to get that five o'clock shadow and that's what I kind of like to achieve and that way you can also kind of do a little fade on yourself, you know, treat yourself, treat yourself right, do a little fucking fade. Make it look real nice, shorter down the bottom, longer around the jawline, accentuate what the surgeon gave you. It's all good. Um, so, yeah, uh, use code 20SPEARS for 20% uh, off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Thank you for sponsoring the show, Manscaped. And for the love of God, if you need a shaver, if you want to trim your pubes, shave that, shave that, that stinky pussy, manscaped.com, use code 20SPEARS. Uh, because this is how I do the ads. And if you want them to be funny, we've got to buy the thing. Um, all right. Dude, my, my, uh, I, I wanted to talk about this, this Lieutenant Dan guy. Have you guys seen this dude during, so all the hurricanes in Florida, right? It's, it's terrible. It's really bad, but there is always, um, uh, whenever there's like a natural disaster in Florida, I'm not happy about it. In fact, it's awful. And oh, I curse you God for, for flooding and, and the hurricanes, it's terrible. But I have to say that uh, Florida's shining characters really step up and entertain me from uh, all the way in Australia. There's one guy who the internet has taken to calling Lieutenant Dan, that character from the fucking Forrest Gump movie who's insane. He's a, he's a guy who has one leg, and he's in a boat and he's in the area that you must evacuate. The government is going, get the fuck out of here. You're going to die. And he says, God told me not to evacuate. I'm staying. And he's been making TikTok videos and fucking dumb TikTokers are going to visit him in the death zone to, to get their viral clip of Lieutenant going, God told me to stay in the boat. The guy's got one leg. If a gust of wind tips him over the bow, he's going to drown. But he's saying, God told me to stay, right? News reporter interviewed him. And, and you can barely even understand either of them. That's how fucking windy it is. And all the guy says is, God told me to stay. He's got no teeth. He looks about like 45, which probably means he's like 17. He's got one leg and he's, he's not fucking leaving. I'm not fucking leaving. So anyway, the, this goes ballistic viral. Everyone's talking about Lieutenant Dan wondering if he's going to live or die. I think he plays a bet on it on Sportsbet. 
People are going nuts. And uh, Kick, the best streaming platform there is, comes out and goes, we're going to give Lieutenant Dan $100,000 and a Kick contract if he survives. <laughs> hey, don't encourage the one-legged crackhead who thinks God is telling him to stay in the disaster zone, to stay. Don't re- Give him 100000 if he leaves. How about that? All right, I don't, th- I, don't th- I don't know about you, but I doubt the guy's going to have a reliable internet connection from the eye of the fucking storm, all right? Let him leave. Pay him 100 grand to leave and then make him stream when he comes back. That's a better idea, a little bit more ethical, instead of being like, oi, crackhead, if you jump in front of the train and survive, I'll give you a sandwich. He jumps in front of the train, fucking dies, and you go, stupid crackhead, shouldn't have listened to me. Time to enjoy this delicious sandwich. That's what Kick's doing with their hundred grand. Anyway, as soon as I saw this guy, I thought that's the last person Kick wants on a fucking live stream. Because I guarantee you, within 30 minutes of him going live, he's screaming slurs at the chat. Absolutely. 100%. Immediately, I knew that this guy, who we've all made very famous, I, I, I don't look. I don't want to judge a book by its cover, okay? But I would wager that it's highly likely there's a reason that guy lives on a fucking boat and has no teeth and one leg. And I don't think it's because he was attacked by a tooth extracting leg amputator that gave him a free boat for his time, all right? I think that maybe he could be the star of his own personal series of unfortunate events that when, ex- when, when examined a little bit more closely, look a lot less unfortunate and look like repercussions for terrible acts. Let me look up right now, Lieutenant Dan, criminal record. Lieutenant Dan, criminal record, boat. If this guy has a clean record, I'll end the show right now. Lieutenant Dan became an overnight sensation riding out Hurricane Milton. Then his long criminal past came to light. The show continues. Let's have a scroll. Joseph Malinkowski became a cult hero overnight for his defiant stand in the face of Hurricane Milton. Is that defiant or just fucking retarded, brother? Um... The many mugshots of jo- Joseph Malin- Malinowski. And uh, it's, it's one of those classic ones. Oh, one of them, he's got a black eye. Uh, and one, he looks Mexican. One, he looks like he's got Down syndrome. One, he actually looks like quite a respectful office worker. One, he looks like a guy who would kill an office worker for fun. This guy's lived many lives, it seems. Um, okay. Where are we? I'm scrolling. Okay. I'm not going to go anywhere, he insisted to NBC. All right. Enamored by Malinowski's fortitude, someone launched a GoFundMe page to help the modern-day pirate. As of Thursday afternoon, it has raised over forty thousand dollars. These Americans love doing that, don't they? They love being like, "Look, let's let's see what happens when we give this fucking insane cunt heaps of money." And that is very funny. Hey, like, goy, see that crackhead over there? He's got one leg, no teeth. Let's give him a hundred bands. Let's see what happens, huh? Let's fucking spice up his life. Uh, even Aiden Ross, an influencer known for his interviews with white supremacist Nick Fuentes <laughs> and, Donald, and Donald Trump became involved. Yeah, I guess, I guess you know, a crackhead on a boat doesn't really compare to, you know, <laughs> self-confessed white supremacists. If, if you do an interview with them, it's like, yeah, you know, giving a, giving a crackhead 100 grand, why not? During a live stream on Kick, Ross, Ross told Malinowski that he would pay him $100,000 to buy him a new boat and get him to safety. Oh, so that's what he said, get, to get him to safety. Right, okay. Well, that's, that's, that's good. I don't fear the storm. I don't fear anything but the government, the police, the mayor. Everyone is trying to get me to leave in the worst way. All right. Anyway, show me this record. Where are we? Uh, Malinowski, uh, 
What is? What have we got? Uh, one year prison sentence, felony case over punching a police officer in the nose. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I'm actually starting to like this guy. He's just a character. I went to prison, I did jail time, but I have to tell you point blank, I am innocent of all the charges. Your Honour, that cop deserved it. I fixed his nose. It was ugly. Now he looks handsome. That's so funny. All right. Anyway. Good on him. I hope he can swim. I I imagine you have to swim if you've only got one leg and you live in a fucking boat. More on this... um, this AI stuff, it's been a very interesting digital technology last two weeks, really. The new the, the new Apple thing came came out, the Apple presentation, and they were just like, new phone, it's exactly the same. We've added a new button. The camera is slightly better. Also, we've got a pink one. And everyone was like, oh, cool, right. I feel like we've, we've, we've just reached the limit of what a phone could possibly be. I was trying to think, like, in my most wildly sci-fi dreams what would i like my phone to be able to do that it cannot already do and kind of the only thing i could think of maybe would be like to be able to project like to be a projector that would be cool like if i could carry around like a projector and it's the same size as a phone but i could like set it up and it shoots like a movie onto a wall. I guess that would be kind of cool, but I don't know. I don't know if I would use that very much. Cause you know, if I'm in a hotel, I'm in a hotel, I got a TV. I don't know if I, I feel like that's like a cool idea that I would just not really use. Um, what else did I think? I, uh, live translation would be good. Um, that's probably the only thing that I would like my phone to do that it currently can't. And even then the live translation thing, we, it, it, we can do that, but it's quite slow. But I watched the the meta presentation of the things that they're inventing. And I think they've got, they've got it right. VR is cool, but I'm not as excited about it as I am by AR, which is like combining, like I wear some glasses and I can project something in this room and if you've got the glasses on, you can see what I'm talking about. So that would be great for like uh, fashion design. Like, oh, let's, here's how this dress would look on this person. And you could see it on them before you even start cutting any fabric or whatever. And you can change things like that. That's cool. You could sculpt something. You could design a building. You could go to a, an empty warehouse. And uh, like, if I'm a real estate agent, put these glasses on, come to my empty warehouse and we tour the home that we've designed for you. How do you like the height of the benches? What do you think of the color of the walls? Shit like that. That's really cool. Um, and that's kind of seems to be what, what Meta is working on. They released uh, or they announced uh, these new glasses that they're working on that are currently way too big and way too expensive. But uh, it's essentially that. They look like these really ugly things. But eventually they'll be really small and they'll look fashionable. You might not even realize that they are any different from regular sunglasses or reading glasses. And it's exactly that. It's going to project shit uh, that you can see in the real world that you could share with another person. They've also, they're also working on live translation, which is really cool. They did a demo of it. One UFC fighter, I think, was talking Spanish to Mark. Mark was speaking English back. And it, there was a little delay, but it was pretty fucking good. That's amazing. I wonder then if anyone will learn languages. That's a really interesting thing. Like, why would you learn a language if we're all going to have, like, wearables that you can just understand each other? I guess so that you don't have to fucking wear the thing will be the only reason to learn a language. And I guess it's just, like, undeniably cool. It's kind of like, why would I learn to play the guitar when I can press play on Spotify? I'll tell you why, because learning learning the guitar makes me look very sexy to women. That's what it all really comes down to. Why would I do anything? Well, I might make me look hot as fuck, dude. Um, another thing that they had, what did they have? Oh, this is something I really did not like. So what there was one thing that I loved <clears throat> that they're introducing for Instagram and all the social media things. And the one thing that I really did not like. So one thing I love 
is automatic translation for Instagram reels and video. And YouTube is working on this as well. Where basically I upload a stand-up clip in English and it automatically translates it to if you're fucking Chinese, you open up your app and you see my stand-up clip in Mandarin with my voice, but it's in Mandarin. It's not subtitles. It's my voice and my lips moving with Mandarin. That's so cool and so fucking exciting to me because that opens up this podcast. I could be speaking Spanish, you know? Imagine that in like four years, some Spaniard is listening to this, to this episode that's been retroactively translated into perfect Spanish with my voice. This guy can become a fan of me and send me messages that get automatically translated to English. We can communicate. That's so cool. I'm thinking about all of the YouTubers that I don't even know that I would love right now because I don't speak their language. All the amazing podcasts and all the incredible knowledge that I could learn and experience and see that is currently locked off to me because I don't like I I could like as I would max out at maybe four languages if I really worked for like a decade on learning all of them. But you know, I won't have to do that. I can listen to the greatest minds and the funniest people and the most interesting ideas in my language in real time as they are released. That's cool. It does make me wonder though, I like I feel like that would work so much better for um, informational sentences than it would for like humor or nuance. I wonder how it will handle slang. I wonder how it will handle jokes because a joke that's funny in English, uh, if you translate it to 30 different languages, is it is it going to be funny or will it completely ruin the timing? Like a huge reason why I place punchlines where I do is because of the the general structure of the English language. If you translate that to a different language, I might be saying exactly the same words, but it might not be funny in any way because maybe the punchline comes earlier in the sentence, it ruins it. That's a really interesting thing. Like I imagine at first it's not going to be smart enough for like nuance, things like that. I don't know. So that's really cool. I love that idea. That really excites me, mainly because as a creator, I you know, fuck, Korea. I could be huge in Korea. Who knows? Um, but also as like a, a, a human, I get exposed to so much more culture that I otherwise would not be able to be exposed to. Because um, I love listening to music in languages I don't speak. I don't know, something about it. I love like Japanese uh, city pop is great. I love French jazz uh, I got really into like Arabic music, but I can't fully get into it because I don't have the the Arab uh, keyboard on my phone and I obviously can't read it. So I don't even know what I'm like when it pops up on my phone. I don't know what the fuck I'm typing in or like I should be looking for or like the genre that's called because it's all in squiggles to me. I don't re I can't read it. But every now and then I chuck on a playlist. And I'm like, yeah, I think this is I like this. Um, but yeah, dude, movies. Imagine that you could watch the best fucking French movie in English or whatever. Um, anyway, so that's really cool. One thing that I really don't like that Meta is announcing, I think this is so soulless and just sucks so much. So I'm a big creator, right? So obviously I get a lot of messages. I get a lot of comments. Right now at the size that I'm at, I actually can read everything. I'm losing on. No, that's not true. I don't read comments on. I can't read all the comments on TikTok. I right now, because I'm really focused on YouTube, I'm reading all of the comments on YouTube and this podcast. So I'm to gauge how things are going, but I've completely lost track of whatever the fuck's happening on any of the other apps. So yeah, I suppose right now there's, I can't read everything, but I respond to as much as I can. And I read as much as I can. And when I respond, it's always me. And I do sometimes feel like, fuck, I'm losing a bit of a, I, I have, I am losing and will soon completely lose the ability to have that really 
personal back and forth. And maybe I'll get so big that I don't even know who my fucking hardcore fans are because the, the comments just go and I can't read. Because right now I'm at a really good place where like on Instagram and, and YouTube and stuff, I recognize usernames and I'll be like, oh, this person is always cool. And, and oh, this person's been around for as long as I can remember and all that kind of stuff. And at shows it's different. I, I'm not good with names at all, but I vaguely recognize faces and I go, I've seen you a few times before. And that's really cool. But I, I, you know, you know, the bigger you get, you have limited space in your brain. But anyway, what I'm saying is I love responding personally and it's me. And I try to do that as much as I can. And I think I do that a lot more than people, even my size do. And I'm not that big. I'm, you know, but what Meta has done as a solution to this problem, quotation marks solution, they've released or they're going to release a AI version of you that your fans can talk to that will respond to messages with your voice automatically in the way that you speak and write so that fans can communicate with you. And that, I hate that so much. That's yuck. I would, here's what I immediately went to. I'm walking down the street. I bump into a fan. They go, Lewis, how have you been? Uh, good. Oh man, how was your fucking, did, did you, you know, I was telling you about my tennis game the other day. Guess what? I won. I don't know this person. They know me. We've been talking for over a year. I don't know who the fuck they are. They've been talking to my robot. And then they meet me in real life and I don't know who they are. And they go, fuck, I thought I was talking to you. I've been tricked. I feel terrible. I thought I was, I literally thought I was friends with you. Could you imagine the fucking parasocial relationships people would build? Like, I couldn't imagine, say I got 2 million followers on Instagram, right? I couldn't imagine the conversations I would be having. You know what it reminds me of? That movie, Her, right? Where the robot ends up falling in love with like 100,000 people and 100,000 people are in love with the robot. And the human had no fucking idea. But in this situation, I would be the human and the representation of me is really good friends with like 100,000 people, talks to them in DMs every single day. If there's one tool that's going to get women murdered, it's going to be that. You know? I thought we were in love. We've been talking for three years. I find out that you're getting married. Who is this other guy, you whore? You said you loved me. She just forgot to update the, the settings that say, do not profess your love to my fans. I don't know. Something about that is weird. I don't mind automated responses for like very common questions. So like, hey, how can I see you live? The robot sends them a link. That's cool because I get that question a lot. And it's, it's uh, you know, that's helpful. And it's and it's it's clear that it's a robot. Like, hey, this is the Spears help bot. Here's the link. That stuff's fine, but like, what Meta is doing is not that. It's like literally what they kind of pitched was you'll be able to FaceTime me, and you and me can have a conversation. And it looks like me. It sounds like me. It speaks like me, but it's not me. Could you imagine sitting on it for an hour, fucking FaceTime with me? Although the OnlyFans girls are going to love that because right now they got to pay Indian men to run their OF chats. You know, imagine fucking getting the sex bot to do that. Dude, okay, an Optimus Tesla bot gets so good that you can make it look like you. You buy 20 of them and you, you, you work from home, but you're actually a prostitute, but you don't fuck anyone. You send the robots that look like you out. That's a banger. That's a business. So yeah, that digital influencer thing is, uh, I hate that. I don't like that at all. My dog is embarrassing. My dog keeps embarrassing me, dude. And I don't know what to do about it. I really don't. My dog, she's 42 kilos and she's really tall, right? She, 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 bas she looks like a pit bull on stilts. She's like an American staffy cross with a Great Dane. Like she's a big girl and she's super friendly. But that's what is embarrassing. She's too friendly, especially when women come to the house or when she meets women in public. My dog loves women, loves them, okay? 
And it's a problem. Whenever a woman comes to my house, here's exactly how it goes. I open the door. I tell the dog to get back. She listens. She gets back, moves out of the way. Woman comes into the house. I say hello. Bobby pushes past me. And the, and the woman goes, oh, you're such a beautiful girl. Bobby sticks her giant head straight in their pussy. Straight away, right up there. Just goes, hi. It's embarrassing. And the, every single time, the woman goes, oh. And then they get embarrassed because they think their cunt stinks. <laughs> but... I've talked about this with some other women that I know. Apparently dogs just do this, right? And it's a very common thing where dogs will always sniff a woman's privates. However, what's not common is that my dog is tall enough to do it to women. So normally dogs will do it to chicks when they're sitting down, when they're close, and and it's like a rare thing. My dog, if you're a woman and you walk into my house, you're getting your muff huffed. She'll huff your muff immediately. And, and, she, and she's like a big sniffer too. Like she's inhaling. Have you ever seen those, those, those wanky wine tasters, those sommeliers or whatever you call it, where they, they pour the wine and they swirl it and they air red and they stick their nose in? That's my dog with your pussy if you come to my house. She's huffing. She's puffing. She's experiencing. She's enjoying the palate. She's she's giving it a big sniff and evaluating the bouquet of fragrances coming out of your pussy. She loves it. And I don't know how to train her out of doing it because it only happens like with with when women come over and I don't know them well enough to be like, oh, hey, can you just like present your puss to my dog so I can tell her not to stop doing that? You know, I just have to like let them handle it. And I go, get away. And I have to pretend that I don't know exactly what my dog is doing because they get embarrassed. They think their vagina stinks. But my dog is just like, she does it to people in the street, to everyone. It's embarrassing. You know, a guy comes up and goes, oh, can I pet your dog? Is she friendly? I go, yeah, she's friendly. All good. A woman comes up. Can I pet your dog? Is she friendly? Oh, yeah, she's friendly. You'll, you'll find out. Woo! <laughs> You can just see them go, fuck, did I, did I not wash in the shower? I feel sorry for them. And it's every woman. I, and I was, I was sneaking suspicion that, that my, my dog would be quite transphobic and would, and would treat people accordingly, according to what's between their legs, not what's on their, what they identify as. I don't know. Depends how much they wash. <laughs> Dude, Halloween's coming up. I can't wait. I'm gonna dress up. I've I've got a good I've got a great costume. I've got a very funny idea for a costume. Let me know your suggestions because I've got about a week to sort it out, but I think I've got my idea. I love dressing up for Halloween, dude. It's good fun. If you're a guy and you're going to Halloween parties in a, in a funny costume, you're a fucking coward because this is the perfect opportunity for you to put something slutty on and not only will uh, people allow it, they'll encourage it and they'll be very impressed. Nothing says confidence like a dude wearing a slutty costume, like a sexy outfit. That, that's a big that's a big swing move. That's a big dick move, fellas. That's a great tip. Anyone going to Halloween house parties and that, that's a great one. You want to pick up? Go with something sexy. Dudes always, they they go for funny. Nah, dude, go for, go for hot. Dude, one Halloween, I went as a vampire, but not like Dracula with fake teeth and the silly tuxedo. I went like, I went to the costume shop and I, and I went, I want to go as a vampire, but not like cartoon vampire. Like give me... Give me like 1800s dead Englishman vampire. And I was wearing some frills and like a dark coat. And, and, and you know what else I did? Pale face makeup, not too much, a little bit pale and some fucking eyeliner and eyeshadow. Brother, when I tell you that my dog could have been huffing muffs all 
November 1st, go as a sexy, wear a sexy outfit, dude. I'm telling you. Now, ladies, women, there's a lot more of you recently. Welcome to the show. Stop looking at my chin, okay? Because I tell you what, half of you bitches were here for, for just for my personality and sense of humor, okay? And you, shallow hoes who are just here for the jawline, because I'm a little bit pretty, you need, to, you need to show some respect to the real OGs that were here when I was ugly, okay? They're the boss bitches. Not, now, yes, most of them are lesbians. You'll tell, you'll, you'll know who they are. They're the ones wearing the denim vests. They've got haircuts like 10-year-old boys. Okay? But they're in charge. Okay? Welcome. Please allow my dog to sniff your vagina. I'm happy that you're here. But you just need to know what's what. Ladies, if you want to impress, complete opposite advice. Don't wear the sexy costume. Okay? Don't. Wear the funny costume. Dude, is there anything fucking sicker than a chick that rocks up with a silly costume that makes you laugh? She looks like a dickhead. That's a cool girl. That's hilarious. Always funnier. I've never, I've never seen a costume from a dude that made me laugh. I've only ever seen a, a woman wearing a costume that we go, that's funny. Something about it. Something about it because it's not what you expect it to do. You expect the guys to wear silly costumes and not take it seriously because if you actually try for dress ups, you're gay. Right, and you expect the women to have their tits out and wear slutty outfits like Mean Girls. Nah, if if a chick shows up in that fucking inflatable dinosaur T Rex costume, funny. If a dude does it, boring. Seen it. So I've got I've got a sick costume, and you know what? I'm doing it sexy, baby. I could do it funny, but we're going. I'm doing it sexy. All right, stay tuned. Um. All right. Well, I probably should do some. Uh, some some life advice questions here. Uh, before we get into that, though, I would really like to uh, talk about this. So interesting seeing uh, President Trump and Kamala Harris doing podcasts. We're about a month away from the election and they're doing podcasts. Isn't that crazy? They're not doing TV. They're doing podcasts. That's how important... Uh, online media has become and that's how much traditional media has fallen off in that if you want to sway the uh, population, I'm going to do a video about this because it's so interesting. I'm going to make it funny, but it's so interesting. Donald Trump went on Andrew Schultz's flagrant podcast. That's so sick, dude. I've been on flagrant. <laughs> what the fuck? I just thought that before. Bro, I've been on that podcast. I've been on the same podcast as Donald Trump. That's sick. Fuck yeah, dude. That's so funny. And Kamala Harris, she went on Call Her Daddy. That podcast is about pussy and should you do anal sex. That's so funny. Trump is on the fucking Dude Bro podcast and Kamala Harris is on the Girl Boss podcast. Amazing times we live in, dude. I was so disappointed when Kamala Harris wasn't asked, when should you put out when you're seeing a new guy? That's what that podcast is for. All right. Flagrant had a joke around with Donald Trump. They told a few jokes about abortion. That's, they did what they're supposed to do. Call her daddy. Didn't ask about Kamala Harris's sex life. What a wasted opportunity. She wore a suit jacket and asked questions about policies. It's called Call Her Daddy. Ask Kamala about her puss. That's what the show's for. She's doing Howard Stern later. Howard's going to put her on the Sibian. <laughs> and you know what? She'll win. It's a fascinating uh, development because I remember... I lost my mind when uh, Obama did Mark Maron's podcast. Remember that? That was like, that was worldwide news. I was like, holy shit. This podcast is so big and so important that the fucking, like fucking President Barack Obama is talking to some comedian. That is unheard of. Now, both hopeful presidents are doing multiple podcasts 
Donald Trump did a, did a YouTube video. It's actually a great watch of him playing golf. And it's just like a fucking I play golf with President Trump video. And it's like a, an amazing watch. It's a great video. You find out heaps about what the guy appears to be like. But there's no policy or anything at all. Kamala Harris is doing a bunch of TikToks and shit like that. Like, like we're really entering an age where everyone, including the fucking president, is an influencer. Like, that's what Trump's doing when he's going on playing golf and not talking about policy. He's being an influencer. Like, that's a vlog. He's going on and being like, hey, he's trying to be likable to appeal to young people. Trump is going on flagrant to attract 18 to 35-year-old people. Kamala is going on Call Her Daddy to attract 18 to 35-year-old women. Like, that's their influences. They're doing podcast tours to promote their new fucking product, which is their political party. How threatened must the traditional media be by this? Because before, Trump was always kind of playing into social media and memes, and I think a huge reason why he won the election initially, the first one, was because he was the first president who actually understood the power of memes and social media. That's why he won, because he harnessed socials better than anyone has before. Even right now, he isn't doing it as well as he used to. Or whoever was running it for him isn't running it anymore. Uh, and I think that's why he won, is because he captured uh, the attention of social media and really understood that idea of authenticity and showing your actual personality, even though it is flawed. Whereas he was going up against a politician, Hillary Clinton, who was just like the perfect politician, right? In the sense that she would never show her personality and she would be talking points and policy and this and that. Uh, and that is just beaten by a guy who says crazy stuff and then goes, yeah, you know, I was a bit crazy. Whoops, I was wrong. Fuck that up. This guy's a loser. You know, he, inf he out-influenced her and that's why he won. And I think that's why he lost the second one because he kind of fucked up social media. Like he wasn't doing any of the funny stuff. He kind of just looked very angry and he was also banned from social media for a lot as well. Uh, and he he had all of that kind of influence and stuff. He It was taken from him and then he also kind of gave up, you know, like getting unbanned from Twitter and not coming back was a bad move. Um, but this election is so close that genuinely it may come down to who had better podcast appearances. Isn't that fucking crazy? That's where we're at in the world. It's not going to be policy, all right, because people, like the biggest issues, no one changes their fucking mind on. People who are anti-abortion don't change their mind. People who are pro-choice uh, don't change their mind, right? So these big issues that like immigration and stuff, people rarely change their mind on. Those voters are kind of set in stone regardless of what the president says or the hopeful president says. So I think this one comes down to who's actually killing it on social media. And they're both doing great, I think. Kamala Harris has come off, come off of, as, as quite likable to people who could vote for her. Women obviously love her. Donald Trump is is... I think a natural at this stuff. I mean, he is an entertainer. He is better at being entertaining and funny and, and on camera and showing off the, the part of the personality that kind of met, like makes you like him. I think that's what it comes down to. It's like who, who appears to be the more likable human, which is pretty crazy because it's, it's not policy. You know what I mean? It should be policy. Like the presidential campaign should be like what we saw with the vice presidential debate, where it's just two guys going back and forth on, here's my solution. I don't like that idea. Here's my alternative solution. But they both fundamentally pretty much agree on the same problems. That's not what this is. It's fucking, oh, Trump was pretty funny on flagrant the other week. I reckon I'll vote for him. Oh, Kamala Harris seemed quite likable on Howard Stern. She seems nice. I'll vote for her. You know, that's what it is. And flawed as it may be, that's the system. That's the best idea we've come up with is just a popularity contest. And it really is. 
as much as it's important to be, uh, you know, informed about policy and decisions like that, at the end of the day, what's more important for the politicians to focus on if they want to win is being more likable. Because, you know, my idea doesn't move as many people as I'm cool and likable. Unfortunately, that's just the way the humans are. But anyway, it's just just such an interesting thing. Congratulations to uh, Andrew Schultz. I know that's a huge achievement. Uh, and uh, congratulations to uh, Call Her Daddy as well. That's fucking amazing. I love to see that um, legitimization of social media and entertainers and comedians more and more and more and more who own their shit. It's really cool. And it also... Joe Rogan is now kind of going back on he he said before that he would not have Donald Trump on his podcast. He said that a few times. Now he's kind of playing with the idea of maybe getting him on. That is a tough one because he said I don't want Trump on my platform because I don't want to help him. So so Joe doesn't like him. So he doesn't want to help him. And that is true, you know, like whoever goes on Joe Rogan, no matter what they do, they are helped immeasurably because there are just that many people that listen to that show that even if most people disagree, there's a huge amount of people who fucking love whatever you do on there because there's just that many people, right? So whoever does his podcast will be helped in a huge way with their campaign. So I, you know, I'm obviously theorizing here, but if I'm Joe Rogan, I would, I would probably be like, yeah, I don't want Trump on because it'll help him and I know that Kamala won't come on. Like that's like I like I if I had a platform that big, I would only interview one if I had the other on like the next episode. That's the only way that I would do it because having that much influence and that much power and ability to sway people is such a powerful tool that quite literally a good appearance on Joe Rogan could change the, <laughs> the course of the fucking world, right? If we're getting presidents on Joe Rogan, that'll have a huge effect on such a close election, right? Because this, this one's going to be close. It'll be, it'll be a difference of a few million votes. And that is a Joe Rogan episode. Like, let's be real. If he does amazingly or terribly, you could have a different president based off that episode if it happens right before the election. That's just how brains, humans work. Most recent thing is my opinion. And that's crazy. And that's such a big power that if I'm Joe, yeah, I, I wouldn't have either of them on unless I could definitely get both of them on separately within a really close time frame. So maybe like Monday Trump, Thursday Kamala. And they get the same amount of time and I ask them like the same uh, questions about the issues that I really care about. But then I also have time to just like kind of freewheel and whatever. That, that's what I would do. Or I would have neither of them on. If I could only get one, I'd be like, I don't, because cause I would feel so weird if, like, say you get Kamala on and she has a horrible performance and then she loses. I'd be like, fuck, was that me? Or if you have her on and she has an amazing performance, you'd be like, fuck, was that me? I feel like that's just way, way too much influence. I would just be worried about, like, yeah, fuck, I don't want to become... Like, say you, yeah, say you have one, one candidate on and they win. Now every single fucking election you're now a tool for one or both parties that they just want to use you and i would yeah hate to be in that position so yeah maybe you just don't do it it's just too much fucking and that's the other thing you got to you got to like uh, do I really want to have the guy that uh, has two fucking assassination attempts in my house? You know, if if people keep trying to kill someone, they, it's like, that, I hope you don't get killed, but you also can't come to my house, you know, because I don't want to get killed. I don't want to be collateral. <laughs> like, I don't, like, you have to do the math. If you're, if you're, 
if you say you interviewed President Trump and he does so badly that it's generally considered that the reason Trump lost is because of the question that you asked him and pressed him on on your podcast. Now I got to do the math on, oh, fuck, how much extra security do I need for the fucking nutters that are devastated that Emperor Trump lost? Now I got to pay extra security. I can't afford that. I want to go to the shops by myself. Maybe I don't want to interview any presidential candidate. Fuck that. You know, that's a consideration as well. Maybe having presidents on your on your uh, podcast just makes your personal life so much more fucked. I don't know. Should we do some emails? Miscellaneous bit of the end. All right. Dude, this is going to be our longest episode yet. I hope that's okay. Um, but I, I'm kind of sick of like, I have all these things that I want to talk about. And I've had this idea in my head of like, oh, the podcast is an hour, the podcast is an hour. And then I'll talk about a couple of things and then I will just be like, all right, we don't have time for emails. And then I never do emails and then I never get emails. But the emails are my favorite part of the show. So I'm just trying out. I'm going to talk about everything I want to do, talk about, and then we'll do emails as well. And we'll see how you guys like this. Um, Okay. So uh, if you want to send an email to the show, send it through the podcast at loosepears.com. Dot com. That's podcast at loosespears.com. All right. So what we've got here is story for the podcast. Love this. This is a good one. G'day, Lewis. My name is Trent. Uh, I've absolutely loved your content over the last 10 years and have uh, only ever missed one live show. Legend. Keen as for your next Newcastle show. Thanks, buddy. I love Newcastle. I'll uh, be there next year. I think we just got a date recently. Got a story for the podcast. This happened a while ago. I had a group of mates around on a Saturday night watching the footy, beers, and general chill. After some time had passed well into the night, one of my friends decided to create a fake Tinder account, posing as a woman to lead on a few blokes for a laugh. Evil. This is rude. Using the fake Tinder account, we managed to match with a few blokes and some conversations were had. Most of them eventually caught on that it was a stitch up and got upset and we laughed, etc. However, one guy in particular seemed very keen on this woman we made up and didn't catch on to the fake account at all. So my friend lured this bloke further on the Tinder chat, insinuating to come over for late night cuddles, Netflix and chill, that kind of vibe. This is so fucked. I used to do this shit when I was like 17, 18, just getting people to show up places. It's so funny. It's so horrible. You shouldn't do it, but fuck, it's good. The bloke agreed... And we gave him the address to the house across the road. No, you can't do that at fucking 2.30. The bloke agreed and we gave him the address to the house across the road. So you can watch the fallout. Holy fuck, that's funny. Oh, man. The bloke agreed and we gave him the address to the house across the road in perfect view of us from the front lounge room window. Keep in mind, the time was 2.30 a.m. An hour goes by and no sign of the Tinder bloke. So the group conceded that he's caught up, uh, that it's a stitch up, and my friends proceeded to leave. Right as they walked to the front door, we heard the tire screech and revving engine of a Holden Commodore rip around the corner and up the street. We gathered back in the lounge room window to, uh, by the window and watched the bloke pull up across the road. My friend sends a Tinder message to get the bloke to beep the horn when... <laughs> Beep the horn when you arrive. Oh my God, that's so funny. Sure enough, the bloke pulls up across the road, beeping the horn, much to our amusement and fits of laughter. 3.30 in the morning. My friend then sends a message after. Oh my God, you woke up my dad. I'm actually 16. <laughs> I'm actually 16 and he knows about you. Please leave now. He's coming out with a bat. I'm really sorry, XX. I've never seen anyone leave quicker, quicker than he did doing a full 180 and rocket it out of sight. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. We got a message from him 10 minutes later that said, well played. He had a 45-minute drive back to the coast. He would have gotten home at 5 a.m. <laughs> Oh, we used to do that shit all the time. It's so fucking terrible. The moral of the story, how I met your mother was right. Nothing good happens after 2 a.m. Hope you and the listeners enjoyed. Have a shit one. Trent, that's so funny. 
Oh man, yeah, you can't be doing that shit, dude. That's so rough. Fuck, it's funny though, isn't it? Oh my god. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more and then we'll get out of here. Uh, we've got this one. A short story. I haven't read this. From a Syrian fan. All right, this will be interesting. Uh, Dear Lewis, I just wanted to know that I wanted to let you know that I fully support your decision to return to YouTube. Thank you. Why? Here's a short story for you. Here we go. I was a Syrian refugee living in a neighboring country around 2017 or 2018 when I stumbled upon a comment, maybe on Reddit or something, with your skit. Oi, I think I'm addicted to heroin. I remember that. Was that the Marina Joyce video, mate? I'm fucking addicted to heroin. I can't remember what video that was from, but that, yeah, that clip went viral as well for a while, actually. Uh, I thought, who the hell is this guy? After some searching, I managed to find you. Cool. Fast forward to the end of 2020. There was a crackdown on Syrians and life became a living hell as a refugee without rights. I lost my job. And despite having a master's degree and plenty of experience, I couldn't find another one because almost no one wanted to hire a Syrian. I was stuck at home, depressed, with money running out and losing hope as my application to Canada seemed to be fading away. It was the worst time of my life. I cried whenever I was alone. My son uh, was about one year old at this point. To fight some of the depression, I started watching funny videos and I remembered that foul-mouthed Australian guy I'd seen a few years earlier. One thing led to another and I became hooked on Spearhead Sundays. I would laugh through my tears of depression. By mid-2020, I think I had listened to everything you had put out. Now, I'm writing this email to you from Canada, and I still wait for each Sunday to listen to your podcast. Thank you for being part of my journey. You truly helped me through that dark time. P.S. As an avid listener, I can confirm that you've never missed an episode. Have a nice one. Mate. Man, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sending that to me. I'm so glad that things got better for you and that you're in a in a safe place and, and, uh, and you and your boy are fine. That's beautiful, man. Oh, that's nice. That's really, really, really nice. I love that. And you know, 2020 was a 2020 to 2021 was a fucking horrible time for me, uh, at many points as well. And, uh, I was sick. It was lockdowns. I was going through it. Um, and uh, it goes both ways. Having people like you, my friend from Syria, show up every week interested in whatever I had to say and laughing along with me. And uh, yeah, there were many, many times where the only good part of my week was doing this podcast even though I hardly ever fucking did it because I was that depressed. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a, a big reason why I uh, got through lockdown was because I knew that there were so many people that were doing it uh, just as, and in many cases worse than me. Uh, and they needed a bit of entertainment to brighten up their day. And uh, I'm so grateful uh to people like you buddy and i'm i'm happy that you're in a safe place and you're doing well and thank you for supporting what i do and i'm stoked to be back on youtube as well it's really cool and it's working thank fuck it's actually working there was a little part of me that was like oh my god is it too late is this even going to work am i going to be fucking making videos that get 8000 views and putting all this effort into it and and realizing that fuck i might need to start a new channel or try something else or whatever but it's working you know what's crazy dude i check my youtube analytics all right and we're going to end after this i promise we've been going for a while how's this so since i started uploading two weeks ago okay the channel has done uh 800,000 views, more than that, a little bit over 800,000 views in fucking two weeks, dude, off, I don't know, five videos, I think. Amazing. Okay. I'm making ad revenue. Okay. I've made my mortgage. So cool. Amazing. I've gone up four and a half thousand subscribers for the last 
I think three years, I've been losing about a thousand subscribers a month. At this rate, by the end of the year, I'll get to pass 600,000 <laughs> subscribers again. But what's crazy, right? Now I'm in a good space and I'm more, more importantly, I'm physically healthy and I'm creating stuff that I think is really funny, uh, that I feel very passionate about, that's coming out regularly, all right? How's this? In 2024 so far, across my entire channel, I have um, done 1.8 million views. The 0.8 is from the last two weeks. So in like two weeks, I've almost gotten as many views on the channel as I have the entire rest of the year combined. And it's because I've finally figured out a format that I'm that I love, that I'm really interested in, that's resonating with you, and I'm physically and mentally well enough to commit to that and to put it out and do it. I'm filming it all myself. I'm writing it all myself. I'm doing the thumbnails myself. I'm doing all of the editing myself. It feels like I'm back in fucking 2017, 18, 19, dude, where it was just me. Keelan came on in 2019, uh, but only part-time, I think. I can't remember. Um, but it, I feel like I'm in that, like, oh my God, I, I love YouTube so much. I'm having so much fun. I'm loving this podcast. We haven't missed a single episode this year. And, uh, things are really turning around. Uh, and I can't wait to see where we're at by the time I'm touring again in like March next year. Who fucking knows? I've started writing, uh, the show and I've got a bunch of really funny ideas and uh, more importantly, I'm just like stoked to be getting up every day and thinking, oh, what should I talk about on my channel? And how do I make it funny? And reading all of these comments of people that are like, it's, I'm getting two types of comments mainly. You guys that are like, oh, he's fucking back. So good. I've missed these videos. I used to watch you in 2019. You haven't showed up on my recommended for so long. I'm so glad you're making stuff. This is just like the videos from here. This is even better than the old videos. All that type of stuff. And then I'm getting comments from people who've never heard of me before going like, dude, what is this? This is so funny. I've never seen YouTube commentary that's actually like funny. Like these are actual jokes that are in here. I'm seeing people come in that are clearly like fans of stand-up comedy. Like I'm getting so many comments. I love this going like genuine Oh, fuck, this is, like, very funny. Do you do stand-up comedy? Or, like, are you, have you ever considered being a comedian? Like, genuine suggestions like that, which means I'm getting in the exact type of new person that we want and I'm keeping you guys happy as well. It's perfect. Like, the new person I'm attracting is the type of person that will watch this these videos about these stuff. They're young people and they like comedy and they know what comedy is and they like stand-up and they know what stand-up is and they're the type of person to come out and join us at a fucking show. Uh, but it's also got you guys happy of like, fuck, finally. I'm getting so many comments that are essentially like, oh my God, I knew he could do it. I knew he would be better at one. He would be well. And when he was well, he would make stuff that was good and consistent. And I'm happy and I'm proud of him. And, uh, and thank you so much. Uh, and it always makes me feel like, oh shit, if this cunt from Syria can get all the way over to Canada and raise his boy and be like, yeah, I did that shit. I think I can wake up every day and make a YouTube video and make people laugh. I reckon I can do that and feel very grateful about it. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you so much for supporting what I do. If you want to, uh, if you want more podcast, uh, the episode continues on Patreon and that is up right now. If you join the Patreon, you get early access to the podcast. We've got a discord server and you get a weekly Patreon podcast exclusive to supporters patreon.com slash louis spears manscape.com 20 spears thank you i'm louis spears i've got a video for monday or tuesday on the channel and i'll talk to you next sunday i hope you have a shit one bye